praise the living Jesus. I give God all the glory once again for the privilege to bring to you another episode on the Believer's Health Talk. I remain yours, Dr. Gwengawe. On this channel, we speak to health matters and using various resources given to us by God and from biblical sense. Today, I will be talking to the topic I titled Exploration of Abar Resources for Healing by Prophets kings and apostles of the Bible. Exploration of Abba resources for healing by prophets, kings, and apostles of the Bible. I am happy that the scripture is not silent about places where God recommended or leaders recommended how we can take advantage of what God created for our own benefits. I'll be making reference to some scriptures in this particular episode, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret it more into our heart beyond this short discussion. But before I go on, can I encourage you, if you have not subscribed to this channel please do your subscription affords you opportunities for other episodes and sharing it is also to help in, to help others and i pray god will help us all in jesus name when the children of israel left egypt they had major challenges passing crossing the red sea but god made it easy for them. He made the Red Sea to be a one-time and all-time burial ground for the enemies. And they moved on. But again, they, get, they got to a land called the land of Mara. And they complained bitterly. Why did they, or why did they complain? The land had water. But the water of the land was bitter. The land had water. But the water of the land was bitter. They cried to Moses, the first, a major prophet. I will regard him as a typology of Savior in the Old Testament. When they cried to Moses, God himself showed Moses what to do. Reading from Exodus chapter 15, verse 23 to 25. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of, the, therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people cried against Moses, murmured, saying, what shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. Moses cried to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. The Lord showed Moses. God himself showed Moses a tree. Which when he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. And, he, and there he made them for his statutes and ordinance. Note this, that there he made for them a statute and an ordinance. God healed the water of Mara using a tree that was growing in Mara. A tree that was nearby the water. They did not have the knowledge of what the tree could be used for. But God pointed Moses to the tree and told him what to do. 
Do you know that this is how many knowledge came forth? I remember sometimes ago myself, I slept and God gave me a complete formulation for cholera in a dream. And I woke up, I remember those formulations and I now read into those ingredients scientifically. I saw that they are perfect scientific uh, formulation to taking care of uh, cholera. Many things have come by the inspirations of God, pointing us to nature, pointing us to what, what and what we should do. I believe you know that dogs, cats, they are largely carnivores. But intuitively, or by divine help of God, when they are sick, they eat leaf on their own. They select leaves to eat without necessarily going to look for vet medicine person for them. But again, Moses used the tree and the water of the land became sweet, fit for drinking. Praise God. We also note from the book of Isaiah chapter 38, when God sent the prophet Isaiah to King Ezekiah, a wonderful king who was sick, and God told him through Isaiah, put your house in order, for you will not recover from this sickness. And he cried to God. He cried to God. And before Isaiah went too far, God told him, go back and tell that man, Ezekiah, I'm adding 15 years to your days. I tell you the truth, this is one of the few places in the scripture that in a way, God took, or God took responsibility eh? to defy what he had said or to change in quote what he said the prophet had said god say god said you will die and again god sent the prophet again go tell him i've had your cry i've decided to add 15 more years to you that is enough but thank god the scripture also further opened it to us that after Isaiah gave that prophetic word, he further told Ezekiah what to do. Isaiah 38 verse 21 says, For Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a, lay it for a plaster, Upon the boil, and he shall recover. God could heal using whatever means he chooses. But after the prophetic word was given by Isaiah to the king Ezekiah, he further instructed the people around Ezekiah what to do take the leaves of the fig make a lump from it, put it as a plaster on the boil. This is a therapy. In science, we can call it a poultice. You know, the important thing is that the scripture was not silent about what further instruction was given to Ezekiah to Achieving the recovery that was prophetically declared. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, we saw in the scripture, Apostle Paul. In fact, this place makes me a little... Uh, <laughs> I look at it as a God. The Bible said concerning Timothy, or Paul speaking to Timothy. He said, drink no longer water, but use a little wine 
for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Let me explain this place a little way the Holy Spirit helps me. This man had somewhat left the drinking of wine, which we will say, oh, good. He had been staying on water, which we will also say, very good. But he had major challenges, health challenges in his stomach. The Bible said he also had it often, often infirmities. Don't forget that Timothy was a bishop. Timothy was a very spiritual person. Yet, the scripture did not keep us ignorant of health challenges that he had. The responsibility of God he is faithful to it. Our own responsibilities also, we must know and do them. Thank God for Paul, the apostle, who said to him, Don't drink your water uh, pure as it were again, only water. Make it, add a little wine to it. This is, in a way, if you want to explain scientifically, you, you make it, you say, making it more electrolytic, making it containing ionic. Uh, content that can make a balance for the body. And wine is gotten from herbs. Wine is gotten from fruits. Wine is gotten from the garden. I'm talking of organic wine. That time we had wines. I mean, they had wines. But again, we know it is natural. And I believe that recommendation worked for him. That recommendation worked for him. And in Revelation, we saw the mystery of the tree of life that had 12 fruits, different fruits for different months. And the Bible said that the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nation. In the midst of the street, and on the either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners, twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22, verse 2. The leaves of the tree were for the healings, healing of the nations. This is revelation the conclusion of the bible as it were but god is pointing us to the fact that in the physical and the spiritual we can explain this verse truly but while we are here it is also giving us a connotation that god is not against it that we have good knowledge of how to take advantage of the fruits and the leaves of the plant. Thank God for science today. They have done some researches to show us that this leaf contains this, this plant contains that, and so on. But oftentimes you realize that the scientific findings are in many cases only consolidating or affirming what our forefathers had known about the plant. I remember a professor in OAU was giving an inaugural lecture, and he was making very wonderful uh, uh, statement about soya beans, using for using it for uh, SS children, and talking about kajanos kajan, popularly called otili for them, and he was saying researches are not got well done on it, but there is light on that thing to treat SS. But I also smiled that day. I said, well. Without researches that you are talking about, we have been using it and with good results. It's not until your research will come before we use it. We have been using it. The knowledge came over ages and it is in my hand and I was taught 
and we are they are working so most of the findings in the researches today they are just consolidating affirming what are indigenously known but let me ask you in case you know this person that has this knowledge is not born again does it mean that the knowledge of every knowledge he has is a waste or useful for you as a believer no you have the spirit of god within you and by the spirit of god you know how to sensitively eh, separate what is good from what is bad i have learned from all sorts of people i know the margin i know the boundaries that would be godly and ungodly and by the grace of god i'm happy as god called me to doing this thing the church of christ we will do better we will live better as we consciously take advantage of the provisions of god for our for our use and the lord will help us in jesus name today i've been successfully i've been able to show us that the scripture is not silent about the use of herbs and today we also need to be sensitive and deliberate to knowing how best to use these things and keep the church away from unnecessary poisonings that we expose ourselves to in medications, Western medications. Sincerely speaking, I may be biased, but this is really, really biblical bias. You don't need chemical drugs for too long. You can even avoid it completely. I have lived more than 20 years not tasting it. And I'm fine. Challenges may come, but God has been faithful. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So my people, subscribe, comment, share, and take advantage of this knowledge we are sharing here. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Love you, and take charge.